Pre-game is brought to you by Melosh Palace Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram, located at 3800 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Melosh's Palace has been servicing Lake Orion's automotive needs since the 1960s. Homecoming 2015, parades, the pageantry, and football. The Lake Orion Dragons welcome in the Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks. We've got it for you streaming live here on Orion Neighborhood Television. Good evening everyone with Chris Frisching. I'm Doug Corliss and we are streaming with Orion Neighborhood Television in conjunction with the Lake Orion Media Partnership to stream live the homecoming game between the Dragons and the West Bloomfield Blackhawks. Chris, the Dragons, after another tough defeat last week, come in. The playoff hopes are pretty much gone. Do you shift into a spoiler role now and try to beat the teams that are looking to make the playoffs? and just play that spoiler? I think you still go and look at it to, 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 to win, obviously, every game and, and make it in as a 5-4 and four opportu uh, playoff <laughs> opportunity. I just, you know, to, to, to go in and play spoiler this early in the season, you know darn well that 5-4 that and four teams in Division One have made the playoffs, and, and, and this is a tough division this year, and, and with playoff points and all those things combined that you have to put a lot of factors into you know you, you come out and win three games and you got that chance so you can't look forward against to, to Clarkston you got to look to Bloomfield Hills tonight you got to get this one as every coach says you got to play this game and you got to win this game you got to look at your schedule and win the next d game on your schedule and that's the focus tonight is to, is to do just that. The Blackhawks come in it's their third year of existence after the merging of Andover and Lasser high schools. We've seen it with Pontiac, we've seen it with Royal Oak, Lapeer may be the exception, but when you merge high schools, does it take some time for the school to kind of get its own identity? I think it can, you know, it, it, it really, in my opinion, you, you mentioned Lapeer, and they're a great example of how the East, Lapeer East and West have come together, and they've won, gosh, 14, 15 straight in the regular season over the last two years. Um, you know, and, and when you talk about the other programs, it really depends upon the quality of, 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 of talent that you've got at your younger levels, and then really the, the development and the coaching that you've got at your younger levels as well, as to whether you're going to be able to hit the ground running when you do merge so uh, uh, that's really a, a combination of it, it certainly the Bloomfield Hills has got a good coaching staff at the varsity level um, and so forth and the ability to to grow groom those young kids those those freshmen those JV those uh, sophomores those younger kids in the middle school level that's a real important part of this development when two teams merge two schools merge we touched on it last week that West Bloomfield's a runaway winner in the Red Division. Clarkston looks like it'll be second. And everybody else is fighting for their playoff lives. And it's not only the Red Division, you touched on it, that the Red Division is having a down year. But by and large, isn't the whole OAA kind of having a down year this year? You know what? When we look at the OAA Red, the OAA White even, um, we're awful spoiled here in the OAA in terms of what we've seen over the last five years. Let's go back. Think about it. Three of the last five divisions Division one champions have come from the OAA Red. So to say to say that the OAA Red is down, if you're comparing it to three out of the five state champions, it obviously yet remains remains to be seen what's going to happen with the West Bloomfields and the Clarksons. But but that's what we're comparing it against. Um, from top to bottom, yes, maybe. Um, but um, it remains to be seen. Obviously, at the OAA White Division, your Harrisons uh, are traditionally very good as well. So. Um, you know, maybe from top to bottom, it's down a little bit, but uh, I think you're going to see some of these OAA red teams make their make a difference in the playoffs. It is homecoming to 2015. We've already seen some of the old Dragon football players back tonight. We'll see how this 2015 does against the Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks. 
stay with us. When I'm in Lake Orion and I want to catch up on sports, I watch Between Terraminas. Our first quarter of action is underwritten by Jets Pizza, offering pizzas, subs, salads, and wings, and more with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Jets Pizza, a proud supporter of ONTV since 2009. And Be Zany. Party Warehouse, offering everything from fun hats, costumes, toys, and party supplies for every occasion. Located at 3970 South Baldwin Road in Orion Township, Be Zany is your home for everything party. Just before kickoff, homecoming Friday night, the Dragons and the Blackhawks of Bloomfield Hills High School. Bloomfield Hills is coached by head coach Dan Loria, He's in his 15th season. He was the head coach at Losser before Losser and Andover merged. In 2005 and in 2008, he took Losser to the Division III semifinals. This is his third year at Bloomfield Hills. He is 6-18 overall. So far, the Blackhawks are 1-5 in, in 2015. Make that 1-6 since this is week 1-5. Yeah, I'm right. Uh, they beat Troy in week 4. This series isn't much of one. Uh, Lake Orion and Bloomfield Hills played for the first time last year, and Lake Orion squeaked out a 27-26 victory. Chris, you've got your keys to the game. Yeah, I think first and foremost, um, put put pressure on whatever quarterback they've got in there, uh, meaning Bloomfield Hills. Uh, they run two quarterbacks, number seven, Elijah Sherman, and number 18, Andrew Denk. They rotate, and uh, Sherman is the running quarterback, and Denk is the, is the passing quarterback. But... Uh, um, their offensive line isn't very big, uh, and, and from what I've seen in uh, both live and on tape, uh, they're not as, as physical as, as certainly Coach Loria would like. So put pressure on uh, on their quarterback. In fact, in the, in the Athens game uh, that Bloomfield Hills played two weeks ago, um, the first nine points that Troy Athens scored were given up the offense, a safety, and then uh, a sack and a strip fumble for a touchdown. So. Um, Offensively, get to the pressure, get, get quarterback on, or I'm sorry, get pressure on Bloomfield Hills quarterback. Uh, number two tonight, they gotta, Lake Orange got to find some more balance in terms of uh, their offensive uh, uh, go to guys. Keith Fields uh, rushed the ball, had a great game last week, 226 yards, uh, end up being 80% of the total yardage for Lake Orion last week. 80% of their 283 total yards of offense. Uh, number one, Jalen Wiggins, the, the team's leading receiver, is, is going to be out for tonight's game. So they got to find a, a complementary player that uh, that Lake Orion can go to so they don't have to, uh, again, just rely on Keith Fields. Lastly, there goes the team. There goes the Dragons out to the field. Last thing real quick. Bloomfield Hills does a very good job of their punt fakes. Uh, they had two very successful punt fakes, um, which ended up being, you know, uh, very successful for them. But but that's probably one of their strengths uh, this year. They've struggled this year on both sides of the football, offensively and defensively. They do a pretty good job on their punt fakes. So for what that's worth, um, Lake Orange's got to be watching for those. Our referees tonight are our officiating crew. Referee is Terry Lyons. The head linesman is Steve Barbeau. Line judge is Mike Lay. The umpire is Gibbon Goolish. And the back judge is Matt Lewis. It is an Oakland County crew. Dragons on the field wearing their camo looking uniforms. Uh, Coach Bell said they haven't brought those out in a couple of years. And while director of bands Michael Steele aligns the podium and takes the podium, we will pause for the playing of our national anthem. Steele, as he leads the 
Bedford and Bangor Alumni Band members in the Star Bangor Banner. you that we are streaming live tonight and this is put together in cooperation with Orion Neighborhood Television and the Dragon Broadcasting Partnership and we are thrilled to be streaming live tonight. We'll take a look at the OAA Red Standings. West Bloomfield, as we said in pregame, has the division pretty much locked up, 6-0 in overall, 5-0 in the division. Clarkston, 4-2 overall, 4-1 in the division. Stony Creek, after the win last week against Lake Oregon, 3-3 three three overall, 3-2 three in the division. They're tied with Troy Athens at 3-3, three 3-2 three, three in the division. Lake Orion and Oxford are tied at two and four overall, two and three in the division. Bloomfield Hills comes in tonight at one and five, one and four in the division. And Troy is 0 and five, 0 and six in the division. Next week, the Dragons travel to Clarkston and we will back, be back here with Orion Neighborhood Television in two weeks for the OAA crossover game we don't quite know who our opponent will be in two weeks. Dragons come out. They will kick off to start the game. The Blackhawks will receive and move from right to left. We remind you that our scoreboard this first half is brought to you by Paul's Carpet Shine. Paul's Carpet Shine is a family-owned carpet and tile cleaning company serving North Oakland County. Check them out at paulscarpetshine.com. And replays, once again, are sponsored by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orient area. Proud supporters of ONTV since 2009. Referee Terry Lyons blows his whistle. Luke Bevilacqua puts a foot into it. It's into the end zone, and the Blackhawks will start first and 10 from their own 20. We'll see who opens at quarterback. For Bloomfield Hills. Well, it looks like Elijah Sherman, the running quarterback, so just keep, uh, does a nice job of, of he's probably their, their, their better uh, athlete of the two, two guys, two quarterbacks that they have. He scored their touchdown a couple weeks ago versus Troy Athens. Derek Lynch split wide to the left. Two backs in the backfield. Motion back this way. Sherman keeps it, and he's out over the 20 and brought down quickly. 
Number 11, Jack McClear in on the tackle for the Dragons. They do a lot of that tight end trade or shifting, and, and, and that, that in, in, in games past has gotten Lake Orion um, undisciplined. Lake Orion, I remember a couple games back against Troy, jumped off sides quite often as, as Troy did the, kind of the same shifting and movement so forth. So they got to be a disciplined to stay home and, and not fall for some of that shifting taking place. Number nine, Clue and Graham in now at quarterback. A lot of shifting going on. Toss back to, I didn't get the number. Number two, Derek Lynch on the carry. 5'4", 130 pound junior and had a pretty good run cutting inside, picked up about four yards. Yeah, Lynch, Lynch is that small type back. He's only listed as 5'4 and 130, and yeah, and he, he's shifty and very and very key fields-like, so he gets in the open field. He's got an opportunity to go. Third and three. Lynch again on the carry. He's got a first down. That was taken from number... I'm trying to get the number of the number 18, Andrew Dank. First see. down, number seven, Elijah Sherman comes back in at quarterback. You're right. It looks like the Drake relays. Yeah, I mean, there. you're right. Four, well, four, four plays already. Personnel-wise, they've, they've, they've gone two quarterbacks, two different plays. Motion to the left. Slot receiver left. Sherman on the carry, trying to cut it upfield, bounces it outside. Got a gain of about six. You're going to mark him out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Gain of six, it'll be second and four. So that, that, that's a lot. That's what Lake Orion staff is doing on the sideline is watching that personnel substitutions and, and making sure which, which quarterback's going in. They're going to run this quarterback sweep a lot with Sherman in there. All right, he, he, he's patient, he, he's following his blocks, and he'll, he'll do a good job of, of getting what he can. Dank in at quarterback now. Inside handoff, ball's on the ground, and Bloomfield Hills recovers. Good swarm by the Dragon defense. Dank was alert to fall on it. The third and long, they'll, they'll probably keep Denk in there as they're throwing quarterback. Little, little taller in stature. Number 22, Ties Lewinsky, splits out wide to the right. Sherman in motion. Throw downfield. Broken up. Who brought, trying to see who broke it up. I think it was Drew Casey back from his safety position. Yeah, that ball kind of hung a little bit on, on the, you, know, you can see the tip of the football is up in the air and it kind of hung and allowed Drew Casey to come on over and make a nice play, knock it down. Devin Lynch was open there up the seam, but again, that ball hung a little bit. I don't know if the wind's having a factor uh, like it was last week. It looks like it's coming out of the north there, but uh, incomplete, Lake Orange gonna get good field position. Number six, Matthew Hajashik. On to punt. Low punt. Takes a Bloomfield Hills bounce. If the name Matthew Hajashik sounds a little familiar to you, his dad, who was on the coaching staff, was Ali Hajashik, former kicker for the University of Michigan and the New York Giants and a couple other NFL teams. So the Dragons will take over 850 left here in the first quarter, no score. Dragons will take over first and 10 from their own 22-yard line. Caden Prescorn leads them out. As we said in the pregame, no Jalen Wiggins tonight. Keith Fields is the running back. Fields on the carry. He's got open field up over the 25 to about the 27. Gain of five. Fields makes a nice little cutback. Sees that that block right behind, right behind number 60, Josh Benz at the center for that six-yard game. Scoreboard's calling it second and four. Slot right, 
Inside handoff, Keith Fields, open field again. He's got a first down over the 35 to the 36 yard line. Yeah, nice, nice little, nice little counter play this time. And, and you know, your left tackle, Nick Novak's the one pulling up and in the hole. And, and again, that's why Keith's been running so well up the middle uh, on traps and counter plays because he's got those big guys up front doing their job. First and 10, Fields again. Up over the 40, close to the 45. It'll bring up second and three for the Dragons. 8.1 yards of carry last week versus Stony Creek. And the Dragons aren't wasting any time getting to the line either. They're, they're set up and ready to go. Keith Fields again up the middle, first down and more over the over the 50 into Bloomfield Hills territory. That time you see Jeff McCarthy, the right guard, pulling and trapping, and, and Fields is able to cut behind that block of McCarthy for a nice first down. Yeah, you know, Keith went out with cramps last week, and I asked him a little bit before pregame, you know, how he was feeling. He said he's fine, and he said he says <laughs> when he got those cramps, he thought death would be a better alternative. <laughs> Handoff, number 24, Danny White gets maybe a yard. Flag on the play. Flag is right about where the play ended. We'll see what referee Terry Lyons. There's has one on to the say. near side too, and and this ball procedure call against the Dragons. You know, and this week the flags are yellow. Yeah. Remember last I, week they were pink. Last week we had those pink flags. <laughs> that was a neat. That was a neat experience. Well, actually, I think the numbers were easier to read last week than these <laughs> black ones with the white outline. <laughs> so that'll back the Dragons up five. It makes it a first and 15 from the Dragons' 48-yard line. Prescorn in the gun. Draw play to Fields. He gets back over midfield, gains about four. I was all set to start charting plays and totally forgot about it. So Jeff Ross does a nice job from his backer position, middle linebacker position to, to close in on fields that play. So it's second and 12 from the Blackhawk 49. Ball pretty much in the center of the field. Free scoring under center. Back looks, throws, tip, caught. Inside the 25 is still trying to see the number. These numbers are different. Lawan Browner. Lawan Browner, thank you. Stuck out of the backfield, a little, little cross, or little ball thrown in the flat, wide open. Coach Derek Bell. Lynch makes a nice tackle, open field. Coach Bell said it'll be next man up with Jalen out. Twins to the right, motion to the left now. Hand off to Fields. He goes up the middle for about nine. Yeah, Bron Bronner, Bronner came through on that jet sweep there and puts his hands up like... He, he, he's either he was supposed to fake getting it as uh, on the direct snap or he wanted to stay away from getting hit with the ball so it could get to pre-score to hand off to Fields. So second and two, they're calling it from the 22. Fields on the carry, Gee. first down and more, close to the 15-yard line. Chris, you brought it up last week. If you've got the... Got the horse, ride well, him. Well, not only got the horse, but look at 72. Nick Novak on his block. Wham, right there. Boom, driving his defender four, five, six, seven yards deep. That's why Keith Fields is able to run the ball up the middle as well as he has been. First and 10 for the Dragons. On the move. 5'10 five, five, left here in the first quarter. Prescorn under center. Broner in motion. Hand off to Fields. He gets stopped maybe after a two, three yard gain. They're gonna call him down inside the 15 and bring up second and eight for the Dragons. Yeah. 
Noah Harris splits wide to the right. Pre-scoring, back to pass, looks, throws. Got Fields. Oh, that was not Fields. Bronner again out of the backfield. Again, just on that little swing out of the backfield. And Caden Prescorn hit him in stride for the Dragon touchdown. 80 yard drive for the Dragons. 15 yard pass. To Lawan Bronner. Luke Bevilacqua on for the extra point. Scout Ciora is the holder. Ball spotted, kick up, kick is good. 431 left here in the first quarter. Dragons up, seven to nothing. We'll take this moment to remind you about the ONTV Wild Food Film Festival. Have you ever wanted to create your own short film and test your filmmaking abilities? ONTV's second annual Wildwood Film Festival and Challenge is coming up. Teams will have four days to produce a short film that will be shown at our film festival on Wednesday, October 21st in Oxford. The kickoff party is Friday, October 16th at 6 p.m. For more information, go to Orion, O-N-T-V dot org. You know, nice first drive. Always, it's, it's, it's certainly important to start a game out with your first drive and, and driving 78 yards downfield for, for, a, for a score. But, you know, Caden Priestcorn came in to tonight's game. You know, last week, you know, a little, little ineffective in terms of p completion percentage, 7 of 22 for 72 yards. Nice, com ball, uh, nice completions on that drive, 2 for 2, uh, for a nice uh, easy completions to help build some confidence in your quarterback to put the ball in the air. End over end kick into the end zone by Bevel Aqua. Slackhawks will take over first and 20. And Chris, you're right. And not only was it a confidence builder, but he looked really decisive in that. Yeah, game. I mean, the line did a nice job of protecting, and, 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 and he's got time to find that open man. And, and, and that, those, those drives, those plays provide some confidence for everybody involved to, to start this ball rolling in the right direction. Blackhawks break the huddle. Number seven, Elijah Sherman is at quarterback. Shift by the backs. Ball's on the ground. And that's one of the problems, Chris, with doing all that motion just before the snap is your quarterback can get screened from seeing the ball. A lot of misdirection, a lot of shifting, and you're right, they, they, they've already in these two series that they've had, one series and now one play in the second series, they've put the ball on the ground twice. Now they've recovered both of those fumbles, but nonetheless, um, you know, that misdecep uh, that the deception and misdirection stuff is, is uh, not working their favor at this point in time. So it's second and 11, loss of one. Sherman tries again, sweep coming around the left side. Carried by number three, Kit Martin. He gets maybe three. It'll bring up third down and seven. You know, not only do they do they substitute personnel uh, in terms of the skill positions, but they, they do a lot of substitution offensive line-wise as well. Yeah, and I saw that they, they sometimes they'll keep an offensive lineman in the backfield as an extra blocker. So third down, Andrew Dent, Dank in at quarterback. He throws off to the right. It's almost picked off and thrown out of bounds. And the Blackhawks will have to punt. A simple two receiver route. Dank rolls out to the right. You've got your tight end running a crossing route. And then you, you're, you're split into the far side if he runs a go route. And, and, and that, too, that ball kind of hung up in the air. And I guess for Denk in that situation, it was probably good that that hung up in the air and ended up out of bounds because there was three dragon defenders right around the tight end, Hecker. 
Necker's a good size tight end. 6'4", 210. Matthew Hajashik back in punt formation. Good snap. High short kick. Taken by Drew Casey. Inside Blackhawk territory. They're going to call him down at the Bloomfield Hills 45. So the Dragons will take over first and 10 inside Blackhawk territory. And we talked about the wind last night. It's no better tonight. There's a good stiff wind yep. coming out of the north. And when you're moving from your right to your left, it's going to hold up anything up in the air. Prescorn brings him out. This is the time to go up top. Mike Jarvis split to the right. Fields the loan back in the backfield. Prescorn under center. Handoff Keith Fields, and he's jammed up at the line. Gets maybe a yard. Number 55, Spencer Haysha in on the tackle, among others. Number 63, Joey Farnan also in on the tackle. And the reason I said this is time to go up top, and what, what do I know? I'm sitting up here in a box, right? But but uh, because of that wind factor, you, you, you know, it's uh, willing to take a chance going with the wind. It's obviously a lot easier to throw that way, so we'll see what we do on second down. Fields up the middle again. He's got running room up the middle, runs over a tackler. He just flattened Michael Almany, number five, and gained about three more yards for another Dragon first down. Or just do that, right? I mean, heck. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> just put him right on his back. Yeah, Brendan Thompson, your right tackle, pulling and trapping. And, and uh, gosh, it's been fun to watch so far, those big guys up front. Free scoring under center. Motion to the left. Fields up the middle again. And you're right. He makes that quick jutter, jitterbug step and is able to just find a small hole and get forward for a couple more yards. I mean, he, he's patient. He, he's, he's got really, really good vision. And uh, like we've talked about all year long, the ability defensively to find a guy that shifty and that small in and behind that big Lake Orion offensive line is very difficult. Priest going under center. Give the fields. Trying to get left. Ran into his own blocker who is being tied up by number 56 unnamed player because he's not on the roster. And then you combine that with the, as you called him, the camouflage jersey. <laughs> you can't see anybody, right? Who said this job was easy? <laughs> Lake Orion comes into this year, uh, this play, third down, third down, 38.6 conversion rate. Prescorn back to throw. Looks, throws over the head and incomplete. Let's take a minute, go down to our sideline reporter, Kevin McCormick. Kev? Yeah, hey guys, one of the things about homecoming that's really cool is that the students really get into it. They're very enthusiastic. If you look behind me, you'll see that the student section has got some really unique body paint going on this evening. Different than their normal green, the students are really fired up and it shows up down here on the field. Thanks, Kev. That's what makes <laughs> homecoming so great. As, Kevin, as long as there's no body paint on Kevin, that, then we're in good shape, okay? Lake Orion's <laughs> going to get called for a hold on that play, so they'll back him up. Um, looks like the spot foul was near the line of scrimmage. So that'll back them up. It'll be third and 22 for the Dragons now. Double it, inter wide. Interesting to move them back and give them another opportunity on third and even long. Yeah. Prescorn got a little pressure, sets up a screen to Fields. He's got that's running exact, room. And that's exactly. Touchdown, Lake Orion Dragons. That's why you do. And do we have another flag? We do. Flag on the 40-yard line. Boy, Keith Fields sure made that one fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. I just about to say, that's why you don't give them an opportunity on third and long. It could have been fourth down there and a chance to kick a field goal, but 
We got the penalty at the 42. We'll, we'll see what the call is. Nice patience by Priestcorn to be able to allow that play to set itself up, but maybe it was set up and successful because there was a Lake Orion hold. We're going to find out. That looked like it came from the head linesman, Steve Barbo, holding Lake Orion. So that'll back him up further back to midfield. It is third down and 28 yards to go. Third down and a long way. Lake Orion comes into tonight's game averaging 100 yards passing per game. They could get a quarter of it back right now if they pre-score. Half of it back. Got they, pressure. He's going down. Yep. Number 87, who's not on the roster. Number 55, Spencer Haysha was in on the tackle. And number 56, who's not on the roster, was in on the tackle. Well, again, you know, I'm going to say, what do I know? I mean, uh, you know. Coach Laurie you know, pushes the ball back, pushes them back on, on the on the, uh, the penalty, and, and it worked out to their advantage, yes. Taylor McCarty in punt formation for the Dragons, and we're going to have a stoppage play. Up, oh, end of quarter. That's the end of the first quarter. Dragons up 7 to nothing. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here on Orion Neighborhood Television. We'll be right back. DVD copies can be purchased by calling ONTV at 248 693 3377. For only $10, you can get a copy of not only this game, but any game or program in our broadcast fall. That's DVD copies, 248 693 3377 or 248 393 1060. Lake Orion in punt formation, number 43, Taylor McCarty. Sets up number two, Derek Lynch, and number seven, or I'm sorry, number five, Michael Almany. Back. Nice kick into the wind. Oh, it hit his face mask. That's a live ball. What are hit, they going to call I it? I think it hit the, the back of Danny White's helmet as he was coming to. Boy, it sure looked like it hit him right in the face mask. Yeah, beautiful punt against the wind by McCarty. I didn't, did you see a flag again? There's a flag in the 45 yeah. back here. Yes, back there with, is. And it may be roughing the punter on the Blackhawks. Personal foul against the Blackhawks. It'll be an automatic first down for the Dragons. When, that, when, when, when did it? When did the personal foul take place, though? Was it on the return? Because they're yeah, move, The chains you know are what? moving back. Is no, it? They're calling a personal foul. Is the offense still out there? Yeah, Bloomfield Hills offense is out there. Yeah. They called it personal foul against the Blackhawks. It must have been a post-possession foul. What's Coach Loria on this side of the field for? Oh, Coach Loria is all the way out to the far, the near hash mark. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. 
and he he's, he's not happy about it. I cannot believe, I've never seen a coach on the field that, that far. far and not get a sideline warning and or a flag thrown. He's giving headlinesman Steve Barbeau. So first down for the Blackhawks. Sherman, Sherman keeps it, gets about four out to the 15 yard line. So it'll be second and six. You're right, I've never seen someone come over that far. You know, we've seen them come to the numbers, maybe the far hash mark. <laughs> Second and six. Going deep. Tipped away by number nine, Alec Meal. Yeah, nice coverage there by both Meal and Drew Casey. Drew Casey was a safety sitting over the top, and, and uh, Meal was right there in... In Jay Cook's back pocket, and uh, it was all said and done. Denk was only looking at one guy and one guy only, and that was that vertical go route by Cook. Okay, check out, check out this formation. We got quads to this side. Quads, we got number quads to the right, single wide out. That's a live oh, ball. Huh, that's, that's a, a live, live ball. ball. Scoop Take and score. Scoop. Touchdown, Lake Orion Dragons. You know what? You live by the trick play, you die by the trick play. Well, as that quad group of players came over to this side, it, it never looked like they ever got all that set. Number 50 was on the line of scrimmage to the far side here as a lineman, but he's technically an eligible receiver. And... and, and, and uh, Sherman ended up throwing the ball. They're trying to run a hitch, little hitch screen to that side, and Sherman threw the ball, threw it high, it floated, and it was ended up being a lateral, which made for a scoop and score Dragons. Let's give Alec Meal some credit. Yeah. He's the one that got the touchdown. Luke Bevilacqua on for the point after. Snap is back, ball spotted, kick up, and it hit the upright. He clanged it off the left upright, and so the Dragons miss an extra point and still remain up 13 to nothing. Go mobile with ONTV anytime. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube on your mobile devices. Connect with ONTV to see what's happening in our new studio, see upcoming events, and watch ONTV programs in high definition on demand. ONTV, working to bring Lake Orion to the world. We will mention once again that we are streaming live tonight in conjunction with not only Orion Neighborhood Television, but the Dragon Broadcasting Partnership. And this broadcast is being brought to you in luminescent high definition tonight. I tell you what, we're streaming live, but there's a lot of fans that are screaming live tonight so far with his 13-0 lead by the Dragons and here on homecoming. Looking uh, earlier tonight, there is a good crowd here tonight for homecoming. Bevilacqua puts a foot into it. High end or end over end kick. Comes down on the five. Dropped. Picked up. Thrown back. We got a throw back, and I think they're going to get him for an illegal pass, which meant the ball went forward instead of backwards. Flag was, yep, illegal pass. And there are three there are three flags down on the 15 yard line, so I don't think Coach Loria no. well, has much of an argument. You know, I, I said earlier that some of the keys of the game don't fall for the, for any of the punt fakes, and we haven't seen Bloomfield Hills punt as of yet. But 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 or at least we haven't seen a fake punt yet. But but when you're struggling as a football team, and you're coming one and five, and you have difficulty scoring points. 
you're trying to do anything you can to 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 bring yourself back into a lot of games and, and you've seen uh, we've seen trick plays on the special teams in games pass out of the Blackhawks you certainly see one that they tried tonight but it failed for them and it pushes them even further back into their own territory you now most of the time if, if if you're struggling and it's you know you say that they're struggling at, at one and one and five don't you try to go back to fundamentals you know at any level of football mostly you know especially at the high school level you know not as much time is spent on offense or on special teams as offense and defense. So if you, a lot of times you can get an extra added advantage by working on and being really good with unique special teams. That's what Blackhawks are trying to do. Sherman on the carry. He's up over the 15-yard line, up to the 17, brought down by Ryan Culp, number 19. That's just, a, that's just a, a quarterback lead. you got two guys leading up the middle, and, 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 and Sherman's just trying to follow their big guys, and they've got number 52, Adam Zawida, in there at their fullback, trying to lead their way through. Trips coming to the right, single wide out to the left, single back in the backfield. And we have an official's timeout for something. Denk. That's awful, actually. The officials going over to talk to. They're over talking to the stats people for Lake Orient. They're trying to see what they're. Oh, they're, they're talking they're, to the band. They're talking to the band about something. Misdirection handoff to number two. That's Derek Lynch. He's got a first down. Nice looking play there. Uh, Denk rolls out partially to his trips receiver side, runs a little draw back to Lynch, and Lynch was able to cut back against the grain, cut back against, against the overflow or the over-pursuing of the Dragon defenders for a first down for the Blackhawks. He showed a little shiftiness there yeah. himself. Mm -hmm. So first and 10, they're calling it on the 30, but the ball's placed just shy of the 30. Counter. Counter play to, trying to get the number. Number 43, Pat Nager. He's got a first down over the 40 to the 41. And they shift their backs to the left side, and the back two guard, the left guard, and the left tackle pull from left to right. Yeah, three big, big guys, big uglies as they call them, running up field, and nice first down play for the Blackhawks. Yeah, Joey Farnan has been in that offensive backfield as a lead blocking back. Sherman back in at quarterback. He's going to run outside, around the left side, and Ooh. he's taken down after about a yard gain. He's in there on the tackle. Jack McClear. Yeah, and Danny White. Cleared up that tackle. So that makes a second down and nine from the 43. Just under nine minutes left here in the first half on homecoming night here in Lake Orion. Twins coming to the right, single wide out to the left, single back in the backfield. Sherman still the quarterback. And he's running that quarterback draw again, gets jammed up and brought down. <laughs> Trying to see who made the stop. I think it was Ryan Culp, number 19. Yes, it was. It was. Yes, it was. Good tackle. Yeah, did a nice job staying home for that cutback. Kept fighting, kept fighting, and never lost leverage and kept that outside arm free for the tackle. Trips to the right. Same play they ran on first down a couple plays ago. Hand off to Derek Lynch, and he's going nowhere. They ran that little rollout, shit, rollout to the trip side, and 
the, the draw play coming back, and this time Lake Orion closes it down. Brendan Thompson. Yep. We Tom called his name a lot. Yep, this Thompson year. and Culp was there on the far right, right end position as well. Doing a nice job of squeezing that that off tackle gap. Haja Sheik back to punt. Danny White back deep for the Dragons. High kick, fair catch called for, taken on the 25 yard line where the Dragons will start first and 10. Have you ever wanted to make your own TV show or operate a camera for a live sporting event like our happy crew here tonight? Well, ONTV can make it happen. Your first step, though, is to sign up for orientation. It's free and offers you a look behind the scenes of ONTV. Call 248-693-3377 or 248-393-1060 for more information. Dragons will start out first and 10 from the 25. Twins to the left. Keith Fields loaned back in the backfield next to Prescorn. Inside handoff to Fields, he gets through the line, gets up over the 30-yard line, close to the 31, where it'll be second and four. The Fields came in tonight's game eight yards shy of 1,000 for the year and, and averaging 165 yards on the ground per game. He certainly surpassed that 1,000-yard that mark. Um, he's on his way to close to 1,100. Second and four. For the season, that is. Prescorn on the keeper. Breaks it outside. He's got a first down and more and runs out of bounds inside Blackhawk territory. Yeah. And I don't think anybody saw that one running. Well, I, I don't think, I don't think I've seen it. Um, <laughs> Certainly Black, the Blackhawks did not see it. Did a nice job on the edge, walling down number 43, Pat Nager. And uh, because Keith Fields has been so successful up the middle, obviously the Blackhawks didn't think that was going to happen. Prescoring gets a huge gain on the other side of the 50 for the Dragons. Prescoring's a big guy, and he really isn't the most graceful runner, but he got the job done. Fields on the handoff, up the middle. Breaks a couple tackles, gets out close to the 40-yard line. Brought down by number 43, Pat Najor. And it'll be second and three for the Dragons. And we've talked before, these are the situation that, that Coach Bell loves. Chunk mm. yardage, give him short yardage on second down. Fields again. And he's going to get stopped for about a one-yard loss. Number 55, Spencer Haysha came in and dropped him in the backfield. Yeah, and we talked at the outset about some of the keys to the game and finding another offensive weapon for the Dragons. Yes, while prim primarily it has been Keith Fields, you saw the big run by Prescorn. You saw the nice catches by Bronner and the touchdown by Bronner. So Lake Orion's doing a decent job of finding other guys in the mix. Fields again up the middle. He's got an opening. He spurts through over the 30 yard line down to about the 28 they're going to call him down first down dragons and, and while those other touches for other players haven't been uh have been pretty sporadic i mean why wouldn't you go to a back like number three who who, who lake orion has just continued to ride and ride and ride all year long fun fun player to watch fields again nope oh, keeper by prescorn and he's going down after about a three yard loss, they're gonna mark him down at the 31 yard line. Couldn't fool him a second time, huh? No, probably not, no. Number five, Mike Jarvis split out wide to the left. Broner's in a slot left. The seam, the Pass. seam, the seam. 
caught by Browner while, while he was getting hit. Oh, that was Dawson Higgins, number 20, no, nope, 28. With those uniforms, the eight looked like a two. Browner caught it while he was getting hit. Showed great presence of mind to hold on. The ball wasn't pretty. It kind of wobbled. It kind of hung there. The safety almost got over to knock it down, but it ended up being on Browner's back hip, and, and he was able to adjust his body and make the catch. So it's first and goal for the Dragons from the eight. Keith Fields up the middle, gets down to the five. So, so Bronner's caught all three pre-scoring passes this, this, this first half. Uh, Keith Fields is obviously running the ball well, and the, uh, one big run by pre-scoring. So, um, you know, and that being said, Lake Orion's scored one offensive touchdown, one defensive touchdown, and they're knocking on the door here to score their second offensive touchdown. Second goal from the six. Howard Shota in on that last tackle for Bloomfield Hills. Sweep coming around the left side and in for the touchdown. We can get the referee out of the way. Danny White. Danny White, number 24. Took the ball, handoff, came around, had a convoy around the left side. That's Danny's 20th carry of the year. And out of those 20 carries, four touchdowns. Dragons are going to go for two to take a three touchdown lead. And with 333 left, the Dragons will take a timeout. Our score is 19 to nothing. Here we go. Danny White on the edge and, and did an early nice job blocking on the edge. Michael Jarvis providing, as we call, that touchdown block. Well, you, you always know you've got a good sweep going when you've got blockers out in front of you that don't have anyone to block. You know, that, that, that's, that's the thing, too. You, you watch a, a guy like Keith Fields, Keith Fields, Keith Fields. Oh, by the way, there's other offensive weapons that the Lake sure. Orion has, and, they, and Lake Orion's found them so far in his first half. Sure. Noah Harris comes out at one of the wideout spots for the two-point. They're going to move the They're coach. Gonna, Bell gets the choice to move the yeah. ball to. They're going to move it over to the left hash. They're going to put trips to the wide side of the field. Keith Fields lone setback. Nobody split to the left. Prescorn looks, throws. Good. How did that ball get through? Mike Jarvis caught it. And how he wasn't screened is beyond me. <laughs> We're going to look at this again. He just cuts, plants right at the goal line. Number 87, who is not on the roster, had his hands up and did a really a good job of screening the pass, but it came right through his arms right into Mike Jarvis's hand for the two-point conversion. 3.33 left in the first half. Dragons are up 21 to nothing. Video classes are now enrolling. Reserve your seat today. Learn the basics of studio and field production with ONTV staff of video professionals. We offer hands-on instruction in a fun atmosphere. Orion residents pay only $10. Call ONTV to find out more at 248-693-3377 or 248-393-1060 or visit our webpage at orionontv.org. Luke Bevilacqua approaches, puts a foot into it, end over end kick, taken at the one by number three, Kit Martin, 
and he brings it out to the 20 yard line where the Blackhawks will take over first and 10. That was a 75 yard drive by the Dragons. If you're Bloomfield Hills, you wanna just try to get something done, get a score before the half, because the Dragons get the ball back, or get the ball to start the second half. Number three, Kit Martin splits wide to the left. Derek Lynch in motion. And Sherman on the keeper gets out near the 30. He's going to be about a yard short of the first down. West Bloomfield has their full complement of timeouts left. Lake Orion has two as we approach the three-minute mark of the second quarter. Bloomfield Hills got They Spread have formation. to call. They have to call that. And they didn't intended for wow. number 23, Devin Lynch, who saw it go right through his hands. And they had both their wideouts on the right side of the formation take two steps before the ball was snapped. Sure looked like they didn't call it, and, and, and they came out kind of uh, they ran that second play very quick. They switched quarterbacks. Sherman was the quarterback in the first down. They brought Dank in right quickly on the second down and had caught Lake Orion off guard a little bit and nicely thrown ball, just dropped. Sherman back in the gun. Hand off Derek Lynch coming around the left side and he swarmed in and dropped. On third down, no gain. Boy, it sure looked like Lynch had the edge when he first got the ball from Dank. You see it right about here. It looks like he's got, look at that. It looks like he's got the edge, but all of a sudden you saw Lake Orin shed their blocks, come flat down the line of scrimmage, and force a fourth and short. Here's where you need to watch out what Bloomfield Hills does on the punt team. Jake Kiefer closed up the sweep for the Dragons. They're going for it on they fourth are going and for one. It. Derek Lynch split wide and just a keeper up the middle and they didn't get it. It's going to be real close. Keeper by Sherman tried to go straight up into the line and he didn't make it. Let's see what they call. They called first down. Based on what? Coach Bell can ask for a measurement. And the the stick is over the 30 and the ball is shy of the 30. Bloomfield Hills ready to go offensively here. They are. Mm. Double wide, double slot look for the Blackhawks. Number 18, Andrew Dankin. Screen. Looks, throws over the, over the head of Derek Lynch. And that'll bring up second down and 10 with under two minutes. We're at the 155 mark here in the second quarter. Interesting why you don't get to measure on, on a, something that close. I would have thought it would have been automatic. I'm not going to say anything about officials, though, lately. Second There's been 10. something. Uh, officials going on. Talk, controversies lately. Just You've had a other games, week. maybe. Oh, a little flea flicker. Sherman's throwing deep and overthrows. That ball was flipped around three times before Sherman threw it down to right, the left side and overthrew Derek Lynch. Yep, There's we're... one handoff. Flip back. Double reverse handoff, and, and, and both wide receivers, the last the, the last throw by Dank and that throw that, that time by Sherman were open, but uh, first one dropped, this one just overthrown. So that brings up third and 10, 148 left here in the half. Blackhawks have a third and 10. Nice Caught. catch. And they made, they're ruling a, a catch. 
at the 41 yard line for a first down. Simple number, hit. Number 22 is Ty Slansky. Simple hitch route. Plenty of time for Denk to throw the ball. Beautiful ball where no one else but Slazinski could catch it. Well done, well caught. Trips to the right or to the left. Toss over the middle. Caught. Number 19, or number 10, Jay Cook on the catch. And he just wanted to get out of bounds. Yeah, which is interesting because you got three timeouts left. You get the, if you go forward and get the first down, the clock's going to stop anyway. You were one yard short of that first exactly. down. Get up field instead of going flat. Shortest. What and do we? What do, and what? he fumbled it out of bounds. What do coaches always say? Shortest distance between two points is a what? Straight line. Straight line. So you got to go that way as opposed to this way. You've got three timeouts. You still got a minute and thirty seconds left here in the second quarter. Plenty of time. You don't have to worry about getting out of bounds. Get up field. Get those tough yardage. Your yards. Now they've got him with a first down now at midfield. There are some dynamics going on around here tonight that, no, oh, now they don't. They've got him marked, yeah. Well, the first down marker's got to move. It'll be second and one from midfield. Again, quads to the left. Double pass, Soft watch the- back. He doesn't have any place to throw it. And he's not going to make it. Number five, Mike Almany, took the pitch from Sherman, was going to throw it back, and just had no place to throw. He had plenty of time, but, but the quarterback, Sherman, does it. He just kind of waits and waits and waits. And, and, and as a result, he's never worked his way to get open. You know, and that's what we talked about, you know, earlier this quarter. When you're down, when you're struggling, they're, they're trying to result to trickery to, to, to get them back in football games. And, and uh, so far tonight, uh, again, it hasn't worked for the Blackhawks. I didn't get the Dragons number, um, but one of their ends on the right side is the one that held up Sherman from getting out into his pass pattern. And then... Once Almany started on his rush, came off Sherman and made the tackle for the stop. Great play for the defense. So now it brings up a third and three from the Blackhawk 48, a minute 11 left in the second quarter. You know, your second and one, and you result to, to trickery that doesn't work for you as opposed to, you know, trying to surge forward, get a first down and start the start over on downs. Now you put yourself in third and three, a little bit more difficult to convert. High formation in the backfield alongside Sherman. He goes on the keeper and he's not gonna get it again. Gain of one. So it'll be fourth and two from the Blackhawk 49, they have to get to the Dragon 49. Sherman stays in at quarterback. That he did not get. Kit Martin on the run. He got to midfield and he didn't make it. Dragons will take over on downs. What a stand for the Lake Orion defense. Very nice series. They're jumping, coming off the field, jumping, clapping, and well-deserved that series. Well-deserved. Little jet sweep action there, and number three, Kit Martin just cuts up inside, but cuts up inside to a, a wall of green. Defensive coordinator Brad Fisher yeah, he celebrated for about 10 seconds, and then right back to coaching them up as they come off the field. So Dragons take over, first and 10, ball at midfield, 37.7 seconds left. Dragons up, 21 to nothing. And you got time to do something with two, out, or two, two timeouts. Free scoring, back to pass, looks, 
He's trying to set oh. the screen. Picked off by number 77, who is not on the roster. It's a big time football play. 87. 87. Big time football He's play. He's not on the roster either. Prescorn tries to run screen and they've he recognizes screen and just one hands it. It's like he's going up for a basketball rebound, just brings it down with his right hand, makes a heck of a defensive football play. He's a big guy. He, he was the one on the two-point conversion that had his hands up. Good football awareness. So the Blackhawks will take over, 32 seconds left. Ball on the Lake Orion 37. Both teams having a slight conference. You went over to try to find another roster. PA, PA announcer doesn't have it either. Yeah. So first and 10 for the Blackhawks. Derek. Derek Lynch on the carry. Number 18, Andrew Denk was in at quarterback. What they haven't done off that, that, that formation is, is, is roll, rolled out and actually thrown. They've always run the draw coming back. Watch the double pass draw again. The side. Complete to number five, Michael Almany. He's out of bounds near the 20 yard line. 20 and a half seconds left. Second and four for the Blackhawks. Throws, intercepted by the Dragons on the goal line. I'm trying to see who, at, from the safety position, I'm assuming it was Drew Casey, and it was. Just out playing center field. Yep. And when you throw a ball high over, the, you throw that seam route high, and 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 those safeties, of the Dragons, are sit to taut high and not get beat deep, cover the deepest man in your half of the field. That's where Drew Casey was, intercepted it right at the goal line, and stops a Blackhawks drive. 11.7 seconds left here in the first half. Dragons are just going to take a knee, go into the locker room. But Lake Orion's going to call a timeout first. Be sure to tune into replays of your favorite games right here on ONTV. Tune in Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays at 7 p.m., Saturdays at 1 p.m. for the most current games in our lineup. Games are also replayed throughout the week, so check out our program guide on our webpage at orionontv.org for replay times that best fit your viewing schedule. Also visit our YouTube link for games on demand. That's orionontv.org. You know, and that is a great resource for us because we can go on and, and look at the previous games, critique ourselves, and try to get better. Prescorn takes a knee. The last nine seconds will count off, and the Dragons will go into the locker room up 21 to nothing. That's the end of the first half. You're watching exclusive coverage of Lake Orion Dragon football here on Orion Neighborhood Television. You'd do anything to take care of that spot on your lawn, so why not take care of that spot on your skin? If you're a man over 50, you're in the group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the cancer that kills one person every hour. Check your skin for suspicious or changing spots. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out what to look for. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Halftime is underwritten by Malasha's Palace, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. 
located at 3800 South Lapeer Road in Lake Orion. Malasha's Palace has been servicing Lake Orion automotive needs since the 1960s. Dragon Marching Band. At this time, the members of the Lake Orion Leadership Class will be setting up for the crowning of our 2015 Homecoming King and Queen. If you'll be patient for a minute while we prepare for tonight's festivities. I have to loop around. I have to loop around. So stop, stop, stop. Ryan is on the varsity football. 
football team and a member of the Lake Orion Leadership Class. JD is represented tonight by her mom, Christy Bell. Her dad's a little busy right now. Jane is a member of the varsity softball team and a member of the Lake Orion Leadership Class. Let's welcome Jamie and Ryan. And our first senior couple this evening. Our first couple is Destiny Roper and Dominic Fasman. Destiny is the daughter of Jennifer Roper and the stepdaughter of George Cotillier. Destiny's the captain of the varsity cheer team that's playing at the Spanish Club. In the future, she hopes to attend the University of Michigan to pursue a degree in nursing. Again, give a round of applause for Destiny and Dominic. Dominic is the son of Nancy and Al Fossman. He's currently a member of the wrestling team. He's undecided of his future plans for education, but loves being a dragon. Again, Destiny and Dominic. is King of Winner and Charlie Tulega. <laughs> Kayla is the daughter of Jennifer and Carl Winner. She's a varsity tennis player and a member of the Dragon Marching Band. She's involved in the National Honor Society and the Science Honor Society as well. Charlie is the son of Whitney and Brian Tulega. He works at Chicago Brothers Pizza and enjoys time with his friends. Our third couple tonight is Clarissa McCullough and Justin Cameron. <laughs> Clarissa is the daughter of Crystal and Tim McCullough. She's looking forward to attending OCC next year with a career in dental hygiene. Justin is the son of Trisha and Bob Cathers. He's involved in the OCC football program and is a track and field athlete at Alabama HS. Justin hopes to attend Fairfield State University next year, where he's hoping to continue his success on the gridiron. Again, Clarissa and Justin. <laughs> Our fourth couple this evening is Tatiana Pell and Jane. She's a member of our varsity dance team and is part of the youth group at church. Tatiana has not decided on her future plans, but she enjoys being a dragon as well. Jalen is the son of Laura and Raymond Wiggins. He's on our varsity football team and plays basketball at Lake Orion High School. In his future, he hopes to attend a four-year school and play college football if given the chance. Again, Tatiana and Jalen. is Corrine Marnie and Matthew Aiello. Corrine is the daughter of Kristen and Rob Marnie. She's a member of our ranked volleyball team, an active member of SOS, and a member of the leadership class at the Corrine High School. She hopes to attend Eastern Michigan University or Grand Valley to pursue a volleyball additional play. Matthew is the son of Joanne and Paul Aiello. He's involved in football, basketball, and a varsity golfer. He's a member of the television production workshop and a member of SOS. Matt hopes to attend Central University in Central Michigan in the fall. Now, please welcome back from the far side of the field as they approach the court is last year's homecoming king and queen, Cheyenne Sloan and Grant Johnson. Cheyenne is currently attending Michigan State University and is studying horticulture and plant science. Grant is attending Michigan State University as well and majoring in biosystems engineering. Last year's King and Queen are about to approach and crown our new King and Queen this year. As they get close, let's welcome back Grant and Cheyenne.
We want to thank all of our court participants this evening. These young people standing in front of you are the best of the best at LOHS. They were elected by a student body of almost 2,400 students as their class representatives. One final applause for all of our Lake Orion homecoming court this year. At this time, we would like to crown this year's homecoming king, Grant. If you'll do us the honors and please crown this year's king, Dominic Fossman. And Cheyenne, if you'll do us the honors and please crown this year's 2015 homecoming queen, that's the Dominic Dustin, if you'll step forward, please, so we can take a couple of pictures of our 2015 Homecoming King and Queen. Congratulations to all of our courts and all of our court participants this evening. I'm Jerry Mathers, and I have diabetic peripheral neuropathy, or DPN. DPN most often damages nerves in the hands and feet, causing pain, numbness, or even total loss of feeling, and it's become a leading cause of lower limb amputation. If you have diabetes, be proactive, monitor your glucose levels, take your medication, and maintain proper foot health with your podiatrist. It worked for me. Our third quarter of action is brought to you by Classic Lanes, your home for family fun and entertainment in Rochester Hills. Their 32-lane facility offers state-of-the-art bowling equipment for both league and recreational bowlers. Check them out at myclassiclanes.com. Just finishing up halftime, the Lake Orion Dragons lead the Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks 21 to nothing. 
before we get started with the second half, we'll take a look at the Wisconsin Intercollegiate Athletic Wow, Conference look standards. at this. Chris's, <laughs> Chris's wow. Uni University of Wisconsin Whitewater Warhawks. Gee. Not only ranked number one in Division Three. Yep. Undefeated again. Yep. They're uh, they're they're playing well again this year. So six out of eight, eight last eight years they've won the Division Three national championship, and uh, you know so far so good this year. They don't they, miss you a bit. That's they. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> They've gotten so much better since I long time since I since I've been gone. Yes, you got the stats for the first half. That's the best. You know, that's the best stat right there. Four and zero in first place right Here now. Here we go. Here we go. We're, no, we're not going to talk about Eastern. Tonight, okay. Are we? <laughs> hey, um, in the first quarter, at uh, the four thirty one mark of the first quarter, Caden Priestcorn, uh, fifteen yard touchdown pass to, to Lawan Bronner to put the Dragons up seven nothing. Um, and then early into the second quarter, a, uh, Bloomfield Hills on off, uh, offense. Um, there was a lateral that was fumbled, and Alec Meal picked the ball up, recovered the ball, returned the ball uh, for a touchdown to put the Dragons up 13-0, an extra point at the upright, and uh, Lake Orange up 13-0. Finally, at, uh, with 3.33 to go in the second quarter, Danny White, a six-yard touchdown run, and the two-point conversion was good to Michael Jarvis to put the Dragons up 21 to nothing. Uh, in terms of uh, individual stats, Caden Priest scored a nice first half in the air, three of four for 56 yards and a touchdown. Um, and Keith Fields, the go-to running back, he does go over 1,000 yards for the season. He had 97 yards in the first half for, was, uh, was 70, on 17 attempts. Lawan Le Bronner caught all three of Caden Priest scores, um, Footballs, passes, three of three for 56 yards. Uh, for Bloomfield Hills, Andrew Denk was three of nine in the air for 26 yards and an interception. Rushing Derek Lynch, they're, they're back, six carries for 40 yards. And their quarterback, their running quarterback, Elijah Sherman, was at 12 carries for 31 yards. Um, a turnover on both sides of the football. Uh, actually, two turnovers, excuse me, for for Bloomfield Hills, an interception and a fumble recovery. And then um, those are the stats after the first half. 21 nothing is the most important stat. We'll take a minute, go down to Kevin McCormick on the sideline with some special guests. Kev? Well, we're looking for okay, we're areas. here with the, uh, with the new homecoming, newly crowned homecoming king and queen right here. How does it feel, guys, to be the newly crowned homecoming king and queen? It's really exciting. I'm, like, really happy. Yeah, it's, 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 it was unexpected, kind of, so yeah. it's, like, a lot more fun and exciting. So tell the viewers your name, Dominic Fosman, right? Okay, Dominic, and what's your name? Destiny Roper. Destiny Roper. So these are the new, newly crowned king and queen of Lake Orion High School for 2015. Congratulations, guys. Thanks, Kevin. So West Bloomfield, or I'm sorry, Bloomfield Hills will kick off to start the second half. We didn't get much of a chance to see Matt Hajashik except as a punter. I was watching him in halftime warm-ups and he was kicking him 45 yards into the wind. So Dragons get the football to start the second half. And we will remind you again that our replays will be sponsored by Jets Pizza. Jets Pizza with two convenient locations in the Orion area. Proud supporters of Orion Neighborhood Television since 2009. And we thank Jets for feeding the crew here. Our producer director, Ian Locke, is here pushing the buttons, making everything go smoothly. And again, tonight we are being streamed live. It is in conjunction with a partnership between Orion Neighborhood Television and the Dragon Broadcasting Partnership. Chris, your Coach Bell, what do you tell your team at the half? 
what do you tell your team at the half is, is there's a whole other half to, to play and and the game's not over yet and and you go out and and uh, win a half and you, you go out and win this half and you win the football game and and, and right now it's a matter of trying to find um, again some some more consistency offensively the defense has played well in the last couple of weeks and you know and uh, you know there was breakdowns late in that last drive last week against Stony Creek um, that 80 yard touchdown drive that ended up putting them ahead but uh, you know the, um, the defense has played very well and then they've they've contained uh, Derek Lynch the running back and and uh, they've held their their passing quarterback Andrew Dank to you know three of nine so um, it, it's all about trying to find the, ne the next level, both individually and as collectively as a football team. Jack McClear, one of the deep backs. Matt Hajashik approaches the ball, puts a foot into it, low wobbly kick taken at the 10. Cut back, got a little running room up to the 40 yard line. Good return by Danny White. Danny White. That you sit on one of those low line drive kickoffs, you don't have a lot of time to get, to get your your kick coverage team downfield, and 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 Danny wasn't wasn't touched until he at least got to the 28, 29, 30 yard line. It's it's one of those things that throws the whole return or the whole kickoff team out of sync. Same thing like a ball bouncing or a returner dropping it then picking it up. Prescorn on the handoff to Keith Fields around the right side gets maybe a yard. And I'm sure that in the Bloomfield Hills locker room, they were saying, we got to stop number three. Got to stop number three. We got to find a way to force turnovers. We got to find a way to get the ball back and, and execute. You know, they're only averaging 10 points a season, 10 points per game this season. So um, they got their work cut out for them in the second half. Mike Jarvis splits out wide to the right. Free scoring in the gun. Hand off to Fields. He's trapped in the backfield, and he's going to get maybe a yard loss. So you can see early that West Bloom or that Bloomfield Hills wants to swarm their defense at the line. They figure that's their way to do it, that they will get Keith Fields before he has a chance to get his surge through the line. So we got third down and 11 from the Dragon 39 yard line just underway here in the second half. Doug Corliss, Chris Fritching bringing you all the action. Ian Locke is our producer. Prescorn and we got a stoppage of play. And they're gonna call procedure penalty against the Dragons which will drop, drop them back five yards. Now these are the things that we've talked about a couple times this year. You know, Lake Orion comes into tonight after six games having 48 penalties on the year, averaging eight penalties per game, and certainly they haven't gotten to that near near that tonight. But but point being is that you, you come out of halftime, you want to make some adjustments or and or continue your momentum from that first half. And and Lake Orion this this half so far on this drive has done total opposite. They've gone backwards. So it's third down and 16 for the Dragons. Twins to the left, single wide out to the right. He draw play to Fields up the middle, and he's going to get up to the 38-yard line where it'll be fourth down for the Dragons, and we'll see Taylor McCarty. Yeah, it's Lake Orion's fourth. That was Lake Orion's fourth penalty of the game, that false start, and, and you know what? The draw play has been working well up uh, for the for the Dragons up until that point. Bloomfield Hill should get some uh, the ball in good field position. McCarty, line drive punt, hits at about the 35, and Derek Lynch took it and was hit immediately. So. <laughs> That, that that punt came off McCarty's foot like a, a line shot base hit right up the middle. I mean, but but it was effective because not only was it angled away away from Lynch, but it was also never got up in, in the air and uh, to float and just sit there. 
talking with uh, Coach John Blackstock, and there's being a concentrated effort to work with Taylor to do a two-step approach. Last week we saw he was making a three-step approach, almost got a couple kicks blocked, so they're working to get him to get the ball off a little faster. So it's first and 10 for the Blackhawks. Ball's marked on the 20. Waiting till the officials get set. Number 18, Andrew Dank at quarterback. He hands off to Lynch, who goes around the right side, gets maybe two, and it'll be second and eight. Yeah, when, we, when you're down 21, nothing like this, you know, you're, you're Bloomfield Hills. Um, they haven't had much of a vertical passing game. And in order to get back into this ball game and extend the, the time, um, they, they've got to be able to put the ball in in the air. Denk is their throwing quarterback, no question. The, 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 the problem is they haven't had many of the skilled guys to be able to throw the ball too. Denk drops or looks, throws, and the ball's batted back. It'll be an incomplete pass. Oh, Jack, Jack McClear, I think he wants that one back because that ball ended up right in Jack McClear's hands, right about there, there and he could have had he salivated right now thinking, I could have been in the end zone for six more points. So it's third down and eight for <laughs> the Blackhawks. Ball's located on the 23-yard line, middle of the field. Dragon safety's dropped just a little deeper on third and long. Sherman, Hassel, down he goes at the 10. Number 30, Nick Rose. Now that's Chased been, him, got him, pursued him, and dropped him. Number one key to the game, put pressure on the Blackhawks quarterback, and they did a nice job of doing that there. They put, Bloomfield Hills put Sherman back and I think that was a designed run all the way, but there was no running holes. There was no gaps anywhere for Sherman to go to, and as a result, a big loss for the Blackhawks. So Matthew Hajashik has to kick out of his end zone. Danny White set up at midfield, and Hajashik kind of did a little rub rugby kick, and they're just going to let it go. He had a high snap. And by the time he came down with the ball, he had a dragon right in his face. So the Dragons will take over first and 10 from their own 47-yard line. They're going to 46-yard line, they'll call it now. With 7.48 left here in the third, Dragons up 21-0. Prescorn in the gun. Fields alone back, twins to the right. Keith Fields up the middle, picking his spot. Gets a gain of maybe two. And that'll bring up second and eight. Harris runs the motion from left to right. Little handoff to Fields and Jacob Hecker, big 6'4 end, comes in and closes down and makes a stop. So second and eight, Danny White goes in motion. He gets a handoff on a sweep right. He's got running room, got a first down, inside the 30, inside the 25, down to the 21, 22 yard line. Good run by Danny White on the jet sweep. Great run by Danny White, great block on the perimeter by number 13, Noah Harris right there engaged. Maybe a little hold that wasn't called, but but nonetheless, look at Danny churning for that big first down. I'm gonna tell you, that's Danny White's longest run of the year. Why am I gonna tell you that? Because in the 20 carries he's had and, this, and the 17 yards he's got all year, that was bigger than a 17 yard carry. It was. <laughs> first and 10 for the Dragons. Free scoring on the handoff. Around the right side and gets nothing. Danny White did, went to the well again and didn't get anything. Loss 
of two. But you give a ball to Danny White, he, boy, he runs hard, he runs physical. He, he, he's a guy that if you're defensive, a de defender, you don't want to get in front of a guy like that because he runs the ball so hard. That's why he's, he's Lake Orion's typically their go-to go -to guy down near the goal line. Second and 12. Nice. Keith Fields lined up in the slot, came back in motion, got the handoff, got about five, and it'll bring up third down for the Dragons. Boy, it, it, that was a vertical cut if I ever saw one, or a 90-degree cut. Watch Keith Fields come in motion and just plant that right foot and boom, explode up field like that. And uh, you're right, five, six yards later. Well, that's pretty tough to do when you're running full speed in a 90-degree cut upfield. But that's what you want to do. You want to take that ball north and south, run that ball north into the end zone. Number 50, Jeff Ross in on the stop for Bloomfield Hills. So it's third and eight from the 22. Prescorn under center, drops, looks, looking, throws, caught. And that'll be enough for the first down. Nice pickup on the edge. The blitz on the edge from Nager coming up from the left, the bottom of your screen. Nice pickup to allow Prescorn in time to look one way, look over the middle, and complete the ball over the middle for the first down. Tyler Barkley on the reception for the first down. Big first down for the Dragons. First and 10 from the 12. Ball's on the ground, and Keith Fields alertly drop, drops on it. Stopped by number 23, De, uh, Devon Lynch. So I'll make it second and 12 from the 15. And Priest Corn was trying to get out from under center to get that, that mesh between the jet sweep motion and him turning around to hand off. And I think he pulled out from under center too soon. The ball ended up on the ground. Fortunate for the Dragons, they got it back. So it's second and 12. Fields up the middle. And he gets back down to the 10. That'll bring up third down. They're going to mark him, let's call it the 10 and a half. It'll be third down and nine. Just tripping forward, falling forward. That's what good running backs will do. Alec Mio going out. To the right, Fields is the back. Bunch formation for the Dragons. Prescorn back, rolling right, looking, throws. And wow, the there we call, go. Yeah. The, the head linesman went to throw the flag and grabbed his bean bag instead. So he threw the bean bag, then threw his flag, and that'll be defensive pass interference. Clearly a push in the back before. The ball got, the ball got there. So that'll be. Priest yeah. going rolls out to his right and tries to throw back across his body, which you typically don't want to do. And the penalty was on number 11, Josh Jones. Yeah, John, Josh Jones got away with a mugging right there. So that'll move it. Half the distance. Well, they're they're marking it now. Third down and about four. Fields on a sweep, cuts inside. He's not going to get the first down. He's down at the five, and that'll bring up fourth down. LaJuan Bronner right here was the wing to the to the to the far side of the field to the the wide side of the field. Excuse me, and. Uh, he comes off the field, he's pounding the ground a little bit. He's upset that he didn't sustain his block. He, his guy is the, is the player who ended up stopping fields for a short game. Luke Bevilacqua on for the 23-yard field goal attempt. Ball spotted in the middle of the field. Ball placed, kicked up, and good. 3.07 left here in the third quarter. Dragons increase their lead to 24 to nothing. 
Have you wanted to create your own short film and test your filmmaking abilities? ONTV's second annual Wildwood Film Festival and Challenge is coming up. Teams will have four days to produce a short film that will be shown at our film festival on Wednesday, October 21st in Oxford. The kickoff party is Friday, October 16th at 6 p.m. For more information, go to Orient, ONTV.org. So Dragon Drive went 54 yards, culminating in a 23-yard field goal by Luke Bevilacqua. He will kick off number four, or number two, Derek Lynch. And I believe number 23, Devon Lynch, is back. Toss back. That was taken by number three, Kit Martin, who brings it up to the 23 yard line. And the Blackhawks will take over. First and 10, three minutes left here in the third quarter. And the, the Blackhawks at least have to try to get a drive put together. Empty backfield, trips to the left, twins to the right. Number 18, Andrew Dink. Complete out to number 23. Devon Lynch, gain of about seven. Yeah, just a little, little hitch route to the this middle guy on the trip side or the three receiver side. Safe, Lake Orion Safety was sitting high, so it's a nice, easy, complete pitch and catch. Dank on the reverse handoff. Thrown, oh, picked off by the Dragons. Number 23, Devon Lynch made the pass and ball. looks like Drew Casey again. Drew Casey again. The ball was deflected by number nine, Alex Meal. And he just threw it up for grabs. Yeah, I just forcing a ball and, and again it's and what an interception by Drew Casey. Tipped it and grabbed it as he was falling. Second interception of the night for Drew. Dragons, first and 10 from their own 42. It's Lake Oregon's fifth interception on the season. Had a little delay while they had to change the football out. And you, and, you, and you can see, we've talked about it a couple times tonight, but Blackhawks are trying to find ways to get back in this game. They, they haven't had a playmaker that stepped up for them to do, do the job. And that's been their story all season long. Number five for the Blackhawks, Mike Almany, is going to see Keith Fields in his dreams. This is the third time He's been flattened by Keith Fields that was, coming up. Uh, that was middle. Chris Wilson, actually, Is right that there. Wilson? Yep. I thought it was number five. Okay. Keith Fields again. That's Got a first down. That's Chris again, Chris Wilson. Is that running back? Mm-hmm. I sit corrected. Coach Bell has got a ditch he's in <laughs> No, we're just getting older. Don't blame the uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he is a little bigger of stature, isn't he? Wilson, free scoring on the keeper. Close to the first down, gonna come up a couple yards short. They're gonna mark him down about the 37 yard line. Nice nice job by Caden on the little read option. All right, jet motion comes this way. As soon as that 
defensive end turns his shoulders inward like he did there, number 87, Jacob Hecker. That's when Caden keeps the football and runs around, around the edge for an eight-yard gain. Also number 43, Patrick Major, Major in on the tackle. So second and two for the Dragons. Free scoring to Wilson. He's got a first down and a lot more dragging people with him inside the 30 down to the 27 yard line. Tell you what, Chris Wilson can't run the ball hard too. Look at this run and look at him take on Michael Almany at the second level from his safety spot right there. Right there and he keeps his legs churning. He's dragging another Blackhawk defender for an extra couple yards. That's a... That's, I think that was well, that a quarterback time, keeper. No, Either that or it's just a blown handoff. Priest Gordon likes running the football. He wants to keep it in his hands, you know? You blame the kid? <laughs> Tell you what, he's a big runner. Six foot five. Only 200 pounds, and I think in the next couple of years, we'll see him bulk out. So second down and 10, they're calling it no gain. Hand off to Danny White around the right eye end. He's got about six. And that'll be the last play of the third period. We've finished up. Oh, they're gonna put 1.2 seconds back on the clock. Now they run it off again. We are at the end of the third quarter. Dragons, 24. Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks, nothing. We'll be right back. Today, a new creature walks among us, terrorizing innocent citizens. Until this threat can be contained, we must all be on the lookout for the dreaded digital dead walkers. Dude. They're not looking out for you. Engage. A public service safety message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons who want to keep everyone well connected Sorry. with strong, healthy bones. <laughs> We're back here in the fourth quarter. Lake Orion 24, Bloomfield Hill 0. DVD copies can be purchased by calling ONTV at 248-693-3377. For only $10, you can get a copy of not only this game, but any other game or program in our broadcast vault. That's DVD copies at 248-693-3377 or 248-393-1060. Dragon's on the move again. So is our mascot, the dragon, right here on the track. Just saw him. On the move. He's bulked up a little bit in the offseason. Well, that's what Coach Caritas does a nice job in the weight room for the Dragons. So maybe he, our mascot's in there as well. Prescorn under center. Looks, throws, incomplete. Intended, it looked like. Got a flag on the far side. Dead ball. Procedure penalty against the Dragons. That'll back them up five and make it a third and and something. It's probably just as well that ball ended up being knocked down. So it backs the Dragons up five. Makes it a third and nine from the 26. Dragons have the wind at their back here in the fourth quarter. Keith Free Fields score. back in there at single back. Prescorn looks, throws, over, just off the fingertips of. Couldn't see who it was intended for. You know, that being said, the uh, Prescorn's looking a lot more comfortable. Here's the play. Look at the time, look at the pocket being formed. All right, very late was their pressure on Prescorn, but he looks more comfortable. He's, he's staying poised back there. He's able to look off defenders. He's able to find open re receivers. Just threw that ball just a touch high. Luke Bevilacqua out for a 43-yard field goal attempt. 
wind at his back. Ball spotted, kicked up, and it's going to be short. I don't think he got solid contact with that football. Vivalock will one of two this, this game. He's 0 of 3 from 40 to 49 this season. So the Blackhawks will take over first and 10 at their own 30. I'm sorry, they marked the ball at the 20. Yeah, and if you're the Blackhawks, you, you got to kind of look at that as a as a something to build your head, your, your your to build on. I mean, you, you got to stop and and uh, and uh, when Lake Orion was driving and and, and you, know, you got to find a way now to to get some chunk yardage and get back in this game quickly. And they've done this all without their number one wide receiver, who's also their number one corner. First handoff up the middle to the fullback. Number Patrick Nager. A little counter, the a little counter play to the left side. Number Lake Oregon's right defense, right side of the defense. Base smart on the tackle for the Dragons. So it brings up second and six. Toss back to Derek Lynch. He's around the right side. He's got enough for a first down. Yeah, we've called Derek Lynch's name a lot tonight. He's a just a toss outside zone play, and, and uh, Blackhawks get a first down. So first and ten. Backs in the eye in the backfield. Dank hands off up the middle to Derek Lynch. When I first saw the roster and I saw Derek Lynch, 5'4", 130 pounds, I thought, well, he's one of the guys that will be on the side. He's had a major part in tonight's game. Number 23, Devon Lynch on the catch and he's going to be brought down by a host of dragons led by number 46 Gabe Simonowski Jack McClear on the tackle ball be spotted on the 43 it's a first and 10 for Bloomfield Hills Sherman in the game at quarterback so you can pretty much guess that uh, they're going to carry the football and we have a procedure penalty coming up against the Blackhawks. I think that happened in their shift. Yeah, the right tackle picked up his hand, and they got number 72. So that'll back them up. Dent coming back in the game for the Blackhawks at quarterback. Dent back in, number 45. Four, Nick Lucci splits out wide to their left. Gotta throw it. And now everybody's going to shift. He's went all the way across the damn line. The guy in their side. And that goes nowhere. Number 15, Jake Negri. Negri on the stop. Toss back to Lynch and he just stands him up and drops him. And he's down. We have a pause in the action while the trainers look at a down player. Video classes are now enrolling. Reserve your seat today. Learn the business basics of studio and field production with ONTV staff of video professionals. We offer hands-on instruction in a front fun atmosphere. Orion residents pay only $10. Call ONTV to find out more at 248-693-3377 or visit our webpage at orionontv.org. Dank throws to the right. Got a receiver. That's 
Devon Lynch. He's going to be short of the first down. They're going to mark him just into Dragon territory at the 49-yard line. Nice time or nice protection by the offensive line. Nice throw by Denk. It's a long throw for Denk and, and uh, brings him a little bit in a more manageable situation on third down. Denk stays in at quarterback. Eye formation in the backfield. Hand off. Is that number three or number two? They had uh, they had Sherman in at quarterback. Nick Rose in on the stop for the Dragons. So it's fourth and two from the 49-yard line. Sherman at quarterback, running left. Got the first down, barely. They're gonna call him down at the 46 yard line where it'll be first and 10, Bloomfield Hills. They've got a little drive going on. This drive started on their 20. Just over eight minutes left in the game. Dragons up 24 to nothing. Dank. Over the middle, caught, number 24, number 44, I'm sorry, Nick Lucci on a reception. At the eight minute mark left in the game, Sherman on the keeper, coming around the left side, inside the 30, down to the 27. You know, when, 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 certainly when Sherman's in there compared to when Dank's in there, you, you, more times than not, you, you know what the play call is, especially when Sherman's in there. You know that the ball's going to be carried by Sherman, typically. But, but when you're down 24 with seven and a half minutes to go, you don't have a lot of time for personnel substitutions. You don't have a lot of time for all the shifting and such. Dang. And, oh, I'm sorry, Chris. No, you're fine. And uh, you don't have a lot of time for shifting and movement. And you got to get up, up to the line of scrimmage and go. That's the second time this drive they've com Dank's completed that ball to Lucci on that little seam pass. Uh, Lake orange has got to recognize that and, and, and make sure that that um, Lucci's jammed off the line of scrimmage so he doesn't get a clean release. Lynch now split out wide to the right. Here comes a run right. Kit Martin and Sherman takes it up the middle. I was just going to say, we, Nick Lucci has been a much bigger part of the Blackhawk Hawk offense here in the second half. He's a he's a big guy, six foot, one eighty five. Senior running back. Sherman stays in, back shift, stay in the eye. Guess what? They're going to go left. And they ought to be calling. Yeah, there's the flag. Yep. The up back, number sixty three, Joey Farnan. Broke stance a little early and got called for the procedure penalty. And he would have been okay to move in the backfield had the motion man from the far side of the field not been in motion. Or as we told, if you're gonna false start, go go uh, horizontal. Make it look like you're supposed to go in motion, but you already had a guy in motion. Right. So it's third down. And 10, Sherman stays in, throws over the middle, too high for Lucci. And he was hammered by Drew Casey. That's Slow it. play action fake, and, and well, there's, you know, there's that same play to the other side, this time with Sherman throwing the football, kind of let him high and a little too far, and. Yeah, the, the clock didn't stop after the incomplete pass. So referee uh, Terry Lyons is going to come over and have some time put back on the clock. So the call's coming back up 
and they're going to put usually they call it up to the six twenty put nine seconds back on the clock drag the coaches on the sideline call it up to the spotters upstairs they'll yell down to the uh, clock operator fourth down and ten for the Blackhawks on the 11 yard line. Dang. Screen. Sets up a screen. Nice. Stiffed out and stop. Base smart. You Base can't smart. You can't read screen better than he did right there. No, sir. Mm. Well done, smart. And smart. it was a well set up screen. <laughs> smart play. Smart play. And he just, and, yeah, and he, if anything, number 52, Adam Zawada, should have seen him and tried to pick him. So Dragons take over on downs, first and 10 from the 13 yard line, 6.15 left in the game. What do you think you're gonna see, number three? I think you're gonna keep a, it on the ground, run some heavy clock? dose of number three in the next six minutes. Prescorn under center. Keith Fields up the middle. And a flag thrown way in from the head linesman. We'll see what he's calling. Actually, actually that was Bronner that time that, that carried the ball on the jet sweep there. And they're calling holding against the Dragons. I'll say this much, headlinesman Steve Barbeau threw that flag a long way. Uh, I was gonna say, was, was he throwing it with the wind though? But I said, look at the flag, there's no wind out there, uh, so. No, the, the wind has dropped right off. The flag is limp out in the uh, northeast corner of the stadium. So that backs the Dragons up five, uh, I'm sorry, up 10. It'll be first and 15 from the eight. Back them up half the distance. Priest going back in the gun. Fields alone setback. Keith Fields again gets the penalty yardage back. It'll bring up second down and about 10. And the good thing is the clock keeps running. Not to jump ahead of myself, but it is kind of ironic that the three Dragon victories, assuming they'll pull this out, have all been shutouts. And Troy scored. I, Troy scored three. Troy oh, scored you're right, three. You're right. It was. So second and ten. Free scoring on the toss back dropped was Bronner and Nick Lucci from his linebacker spot said his name offensively because nice penetration excuse me not not, not Nick Lucci I'm sorry that's yes. Pat Nager Pat Nager from his linebacker spot good job shedding yeah. his block mm -hmm. so now the Dragons are facing a third and 18 balls on the five A little confusion on the Dragon sideline. Coach Bell signaling in the play. He's actually watching him, tell him the priest going to watch the back judge and probably call timeout. Yeah. We mentioned it last week. The back judge is the keeper of the time on the field. And when he starts moving his arm similar to a illegal motion call, He's counting down the last five seconds. Video classes are now enrolling. Reserve your seat today. Learn the basics of audio studio and field production with ONTV staff of video professionals. We offer hands-on instruction in a fun atmosphere. Orion residents pay only $10. Call ONTV to find out more at 248-693 three three seven seven or two four eight 
393-1060 or visit our webpage at Orient, O-N-T-V dot org. Yeah, certainly we're up 24 nothing. there's not a lot to complain about, but as, as, as you know, every coach will look at film and, and evaluate what's going on and, and see how progress is, progress is made being made uh, individually and collectively. However, you know, Lake Orion went to the half up 21 nothing, and, and really hasn't established much here in this second half. And so that's got to be something concerning a little bit in that um, you, you want to, again, we talk about having confidence games, especially going into a game like Clarkston next week. Free scoring, going deep over the head of Ronner. You know, so so um, you know they have not been able to get anything going offensively. Prescorn's got some nice time there, steps up in the pocket and just throws the ball high and wide out of bounds. Now here's the time where we talked with with Taylor Taylor McCarty. He's gotta make sure he doesn't put his foot on that back line. And he's got to get the ball off quickly. Gets a nice kick away, hits around midfield, takes a drag and bounce inside the 40 down to about the Blackhawk 38 yard line where they'll take over first and 10 with 403 left in the game. So, so Bloomfield Hill's got three timeouts left. They, they've got to be able to put the ball in the air. I mean, again, we haven't seen many playmakers on the perimeter. They come out of this offensive set. They typically like to throw to this, the, mid, the middle receiver in this trip set. Dank on the handoff. They, Lynch. They've run that rollout draw about three or four times tonight as well. He gets made, they're calling him no gain. It'll be second and 10. Sprint draw. No gain. Got a little, got away with a slight hold there. Number 71, unnamed player. Toss back, number five, Mike Almany. He's gonna get about three. See what it, they're gonna spot it at the 40. They're gonna call McGee a two. Brings up third and eight. How many got out of bounds? So third and eight. Complete to number 10, Jay Cook. And he's hammered at the 45 yard line, 46 yard line. Now they're giving him credit to the 47, fourth and one, Boom. and they're going to go for it. <laughs> Joe, Joe Slayton from a safety spot. First down and more for Derek Lynch. He's inside Dragon territory at the 41-yard line, first and 10. The Blackhawks are on the move late here late in the game. 3.05 left as they reset the chains. And the umpire throws a flag and they're gonna call procedure against the Blackhawks. That'll back them up, make it first and 15. Let's go down to Kevin McCormick on the sidelines. Kev? Hey, hey. hey, down here guys, these are some future players we got down here watching tonight's homecoming game. These guys right here are from the Walden seventh grade football team. They're doing a great job this year, working hard, trying to work their way up to be high school football players. So wave to the camera, guys. Let them know you're there. Thanks, Kevin. Bad snap. Dank had to go back to his own 40-yard line. They're going to mark him down at the 43 and fall on it. Bad break for the Blackhawks. Now it is a second down and a whole bunch. 28. Dank. Looking to throw, being chased, throws, caught, and down. 
on the Dragon 45 is number 22, Ty Sol Solansky. And it's now third down and 14 for the Blackhawks. Dink remains the quarterback, drops, looks, throws, knocked down. <laughs> Trying to see who broke that up, I think. It was, yeah, Alec Mel on the breakup. Thank you, Ian. You know, and, and Denk, while he's got the, 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 the better arm of the two quarterbacks, a lot of his balls tonight have, have, have kind of sailed on him. And, and uh, you know, just the release point and what have you, but uh, making it difficult for those, those Blackhawk receivers to catch the ball fluidly and get upfield. Now that ball was it. Trips to the right complete. Number 23, Devon Lynch. That ball had a He's little. He's going to be close to a first Yeah, down. that ball had a little mustard on it. Nice throw back through on the back hip away from Jack McClear there. But that was and fourth, that was fourth down. Yeah. down, and they called him short. Dragons will take over on downs. A minute and a half left here in the game. Dragons up 24 0. see some athletes on this Blackhawk team. Oh, no question about it. Um, and there's some young guys mm -hmm. that are making some plays. Absolutely. Free scoring, under center. Full house backfield. Goes to the last man through, which is You know, it's, it's all about building programs on both sides of the football. And, and like we talked about at the beginning, the ability to have development at the younger levels to one, want to keep kids out to play this game, and, and two, making sure they're having fun out here playing this game and, and making sure your young coaches are developing kids at all levels of the game so that when they get to playing Friday night football, um, you know, you've got the depth, you've got the skill guys, you've got the offensive guys up front to be able to, to make plays and win football games for you. Number 42, Chris Wilson on that carry. Number 34, Sean Wilson, carried the ball last of the previous play. That's a first down 10 for the Dragons. Closing in on the one minute mark of the game. Keith Field, oh, that's not Keith Fields. I think that was Chris Wilson on the carry. Sean Wilson on the carry. Stop for no gain. Well, a good homecoming victory for, for Lake Oregon tonight, you know. Did a lot of things well. Certainly gonna be able to enjoy their third win of the season tonight after this last play. Handoff up the middle, fighting for yardage. You know, these backup backs are getting in, getting a little playing time, and they're making the most of their opportunities. And that'll be the end of the game. The Dragons come away with a final score tonight, 24 to nothing over the Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks. We'll be right back. We all have a role to play here at Richard Petty Motorsports. We respect each other, work hard, and that helped us get the big win in Daytona. My partners in the U.S. Air Force also know that it takes a team to make each mission a success. Your coworkers, family, and friends are your team. Treat them with respect and together you can accomplish great things. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force.
down on the field after the Lake Orion Dragons beat the Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks 24 to nothing. Chris, we were talking, it, it kind of seemed like a tale of two halves. The Dragons really imposed their will on the Blackhawks in the first half, and whether it was adjustments on Bloomfield Hills part or whatever the reason, it didn't look like the same Dragon team in the second half. Yeah, it didn't. At least offensively, it did. Defensively, it surely did because uh, obviously the Lake Orion didn't give up any points. But but, and those are things that that I think Coach Bell's going to want to address, need to address moving forward. And in like you said, at the, uh, in the fourth quarter, there just as as you build confidence towards your biggest game of the season is your next game against Clarkston. And so, um, you know. But bottom line, they came out with a victory. They're going to three and four. There's still that outside shot of, 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 of running the table and, and making it in at five and four, and that's all you can hope for. You get a win, it's homecoming night, you can enjoy the weekend, um, enjoy the, the festivities tomorrow night, and then uh, you know, get, the coaches I know are gonna get back to work tomorrow morning and watching film for t from tonight, and, and certainly uh, they're gonna get to know us, Clarkston very well over the next few days. Caden Prescorn looked like an entirely different quarterback from what we saw Last week, you can almost, we're almost getting to the point where you can start seeing his maturity and his advancement as a quarterback. Yeah, I think, and, and that's what Coach Bell, I'm sure, is going to be pleased with tonight. And the fact that you know, Caden seemed very poised, very confident, very comfortable. Uh, the offensive line did a nice job of, of providing the protection, forming the, the pocket that he needed to step up and throw and find those passing lanes. He completed some balls in the first half to, to Lawan Bronner. So, um, you know, finding those other uh, other uh, offensive weapons, as we talked about, that was really important. I think that's what is going to help his confidence as a sophomore. How do they beat Clarkston? Well, the the stupid answer, the easy answer, is score more points than them. I mean, that's really what you got to do. But it, it, you know, it's 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 forcing turnovers. It's it's not making mistakes, not beating yourself. It's 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 executing almost flawlessly. And, and certainly, Clarkston has found a a rhythm lately. Um, they're winning tonight, or did win tonight. Excuse me, 42 to nothing over Troy. So uh, they've found a rhythm with a quarterback. Um, their, their running back Erickson is back now and healthy and so they've got that rhythm back that like they have had the last few years uh, up in Clarkson. We still don't know who the crossover opponent will be. It will be here and it's always good. I mean if, if they can beat Clarkston to be able to make your at least have your winning season finish out season on your home field. Yeah, it is, but I, I will say this, as every coach will say this, they're only worried about Clarkson. They're not worried about crossovers. They're not worried about five and four. They're worried about taking three and four to four and four, and that's that's going to be the devotion uh, in film room and on the practice field, uh, again, for the next six, seven days. Coach Bell's almost on his way over here. There he is, Coach. Good win. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. You were able to do it without your number one wide receiver, your number one cornerback, as you told me in pregame. It's next guy up, and you've got enough players. You were able to get the job done tonight. Yeah, it was it was great to see guys get opportunities. You know, Lawan Bronner, you know, made a heck of an impact that first half, caught some nice balls, did a great job on the crossing route, scored a touchdown. So awesome to see him do that. Um, you know, Keith ran the ball real well in the first half. Chris Wilson came in and gave us a different change up there in the second half. Defensively, you know, did a great job keeping them off the board. You know, they, they're a little challenged in some areas, but they got some really good athletes that we knew we had to stop. And Dan does a great job mixing up formations and shifts and sending everything under the sun at you. So uh, defense played really well. Special teams, you know, I thought we were pretty solid. Uh, so it, it's progress. So it, it's much a much needed win, a win on homecoming, all that all that great stuff. But uh, you know we're fighting for our lives, and it's a step forward as we get ready for next week. You talk about progress, and talk about talk about your, the progress of your your quarterback, Caden Prescorn. I mean, it seemed like from last week to this week, he seemed much more poised, much more confident. He was able to sit back there. Your, your line did a nice job of protecting, and he was able to hit Bronner. He was able to look off defenders and and throw elsewhere. Talk about yeah. his progression, even in, in one week. Yeah, you know what. You know he's been. He knows he's been struggling the last couple of weeks, and, and he has worked so hard. You know he we he and I get out here early. We go through his fundamentals. He stays 
late. And what he saw, you know, he, he, had, he had great command of what he was doing out there. He was going through his progressions. Uh, he knew what the defense was giving him, and he was doing a great job of not forcing things and taking what the defense was giving us. So played an outstanding game, big confidence booster, hopefully for him as we go into next week because we're really going to need him next week. We've talked about it before, but as the games go on, and you may not have been able to do it as much this year, but in years past, but your guys that are on the bench most of the time, Chris Wilson, when he came in, he ran hard. These kids are setting up, you know, you're going to have these guys all together next year with another year of experience, and these guys are getting more experience here this year. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're, our offensive skills are very young. They're very young, you know, and, and we've got a couple of those offensive linemen up there. Uh, we got a couple juniors up there, and we got the three seniors who are really good. So, yeah, we're excited about what we're building for next year. Um, you know, it, it's it's a great group of guys to coach and, and our scout teams work very hard and that, that's a nice thing is is the, the guys are a team in every sense of the word the scout team guys come out and work hard every day um, they're just awesome to coach so it's great to see the progress that, that we've made you know it's been a little frustrating here and there but I can't fault them for their effort their work ethic and just great kids so I mean we're gonna put you know it's everything's on the line next week so that's what it's all for we know what's at stake we know we're fighting for our lives if we can go in there and beat those guys you know playoff wise it's going to put us in the discussion. I don't know if we're going to get in, but at least we're going to be in the discussion. We're going to be close. So that's that's what we're all about right now. One last quick thing. Talk a little bit about Brad Fisher, the job he's done this year. You know, Brad, it's, you're replacing a longtime guy who helped build this program, and we, and we won many championships with him, Dave Tooley. So it's, it's hard to, you know, hard to uh, come after a guy like that. But Brad has... Years of experience, you know, he, he's a great football guy, and if I can't have Dave, then I'm so happy I have Brad. And, you know, and Brad, you know Brad's won state championships when he was over at Oxford as a defensive coordinator. You know, the guy played for Bo Schembechler. There's a few guys around that know, know, more, know more football than Brad Fisher. He's a great teacher. He's putting the time in. He's doing a great job, not just with our varsity defense, but program-wide, working with the younger levels and, and uh, along with, you know, his whole staff with Jay Coho, Eric Jennings, John Blackstock, Brad Thomas, those guys we got a great defensive staff. Uh, we had a great foundation from what Dave built here over the years. So, you know, I'm really happy with the way the guys are playing. Coach, good win on homecoming. Thank you. See you next week. Enjoy. Thanks, good Chris. Job. All right. All right. That'll wrap it up from here on the field where the Dragons come away with a 24 to nothing win over the Bloomfield Hills Blackhawks. For my broadcast partner, Chris Fritching, our producer, director, Ian Locke, Joe Johnson, here along with our sideline reporter, Kevin McCormick on the sidelines. We'll wrap it up. We'll be back in two weeks for the crossover game. Good night, everyone.